Hi guys, welcome to yet another episode of Microsoft ERP Beginners Tutorial Series and today's episode is going to be the continuation of the last week's episode where we are going to continue our discussion on the delivery date control that you see on your screen in Microsoft Dynamics 365. So I've already given you an introduction to the delivery date control. If you haven't watched my previous video, do watch it and then come back to this for the better understanding. So in the previous video, we did explore in deep about the ATP available to promise delivery date control way where it helps us in generating a shipment date and a receipt date that is the delivery date for the customer in a sales order. So we did um, explore about the ATP time fence, about the ATP backward demand time fence and ATP supply time fence in the previous episode. Of course, we are now going to continue the discussion and talk about few other areas. So just give you a recap, the ATP time fence acts like a lead time, which in this case, 10 days was going to be the lead time for the preparation of my order if my order is not in stock. If my order is in stock, then the system will sense it intelligently and it will recommend today's date as a delivery date for the customer. I mean the shipment date. In our case, the shipment date and delivery date was same because we haven't added any transportation lead time yet, which we will be doing it today. So, um, if the stock is not enough, then the system will give a 10 days of preparation time as a lead time and it will give us a date which is 10 days ahead of today as a expected uh, shipment and the delivery date for the customer. Uh, likewise, the backward demand time fence will help us to understand if there are any demand for the same item during the time fence. If it is 3 day, then it will look for the previous 3 day to see if there are any sales order which uh, need to be considered before recommending the delivery date. Likewise, it will look for any kind of a receipt that is pending to be received will be taken into consideration before we decide on the shipment date for today. So these are the areas that we have covered so far, right? So let's now, um, uh, this is nothing, This with this parameter we will review it during the master planning module discussion. So this is only to consider a planned order uh, to be taken into consideration before taking the shipment date or the receipt date uh, calculation. We will cover, I need to firstly explain about what is a planned order and how to generate all that before we explore this parameter. So we will do it later. So uh, one of this parameter I will try to um, you know show you to, to avoid too much of uh, time so that we, we need time to cover other, other areas also. So I will try to cover one of this parameter and the other parameter also behaves in the same way. Maybe we will try to cover uh, the ATP delayed uh, supply uh, offset. What is that today? Okay, so let's get started with this. So before getting started with this impact of this particular parameter, Firstly, we need to understand and try to refresh this parameter. So, if you remember this parameter, uh, so uh, let's say that we have a sales order today, which is on 20th of August. Today's date is 20th of August. And I have a purchase order already available and it is not yet received as of today. But the purchase order is expected to be received on 18th of August, but it haven't received yet. So in such cases, since a purchase order is getting delayed and I assume that the purchase order will definitely be received today and the system will consider today's date as the uh, expected delivery date to the customer. Meaning the available to promise date will be today's date, right? Because we are assuming that this purchase order will be delivered today and I will be able to ship it today and the customer will be receiving the product by today. This is this will work only if you have an ATP backward supply fence. In the yesterday's example, we did it as three day, but yeah, maybe we can maybe change it to three day. If it's three day, then the system is going to uh, consider, look for 18, uh, 17 and also 16. So in this case, it will also look for 15 because in our case, the time fence is four days, right? So this is something which we already discussed in the last week's video. So today let's try to explore about what does this mean, okay? So let's quickly put a 
or or I already have a, a sales order two not one on August twenty. So let me open that sales order. That one. So this sales order is on twenty, and if I try to uh, book the sales order for that item. the simulation shows that it is ready to be delivered on a sunday that is on today itself because my purchase order is pending right but the problem here is what if if there is a there is a slight delay in this purchase order right because the purchase order is already delayed from 18th to 19th and on 20 what if the purchase order doesn't arrive because the system immediately takes this purchase order and puts it as um, uh, and assumes it that it can be del delivered today itself and I will be able to deliver it today. So what if there is a delay, right? So in order to give some buffer in such a scenario, um, we can actually put a buffer of maybe two day or three day here so that we are very, very sure that even if the purchase order arrives on 20, I need at least one more day and then I will be delivering it the other day. Okay, in my case, I'll put a two day buffer to be very, very sure. Okay, so this is nothing but that is the kind of a buffer that I am getting if I put an offset supply. Okay, this is like a backward and this is like an offset from the backward. Okay, so, so now if I try to put the uh, sales order that is line again. save it i'll see that there is it's not available on sunday uh, or for two days it's available on the third day which is on 22nd it will be shipped and it will be delivered on the same day so this behavior is triggered based on this particular parameter okay so the explanation is of course it is delayed and it is most likely will be received on 20 but i don't want to take a risk of committing 20 as my delivery date I will put a time fence here and make sure that this time fence is two days so I have a buffer and I will have like uh, the, the shipment date and the delivery date as 22nd of August so that I'm more safe okay so to trigger this logic you will be uh, you will be using this ATP delayed um, supply time fence uh, offset time which is here okay so hope I'm clear and likewise you will have to do your homework on the demand offset time frame it works similar way um, and uh, there is also one more method that I have already explained which is ATP um, plus issue margin again if you want to apply an additional offset on top of your ATP um, uh, delivery date for all the orders, uh, in such cases, you can use this method where you have an ATP plus a margin, an issue margin, which will be a lead time added on top of your ATP lead time. Okay, I'm not going to waste my time doing and performing this. It's very straightforward. It is exactly same as ATP, but just that there is an issue margin. So where do we apply this issue margin? I will show you. Uh, you can see that you can do it yourself. Okay. So the issue margin is actually available in the master planning module here under the item coverage. So uh, no under the coverage group so here uh, under this particular area called as issue margin for um, for um, uh, detection so this will be the the area where the margin needs to be applied okay if you apply this margin and try to do it you will see that the ATP will work in a similar way but it will add one more uh, day or two more daily time based on whatever value that you give here again we will revisit these concepts when we are discussing about the master planning. But for now, I want to quickly show you the area. Okay, this is straightforward and simple. The CTP is mostly related with the production module. Right now, we are focusing on the distribution and importation scenarios, focusing supply chain management and finance impact. So I'm going to skip it. We will cover it later. Okay, 
So we have covered ATP. We know what is ATP plus Vichu margin now. And the last method which is remaining is the sales lead time. So the sales lead time is pretty straightforward and very, very easy. Now that we know the ATP available to promise, which is more intelligent way, which considers the inventory, which considers the demand, which considers the supply, considers the planned order, considers so many aspects and intelligently recommend the delivery date and the shipment date to the customer. But the sales lead time is doesn't consider as any of this. It's just very straightforward and it will only blindly consider this lead time. In my case, I'm going to give it two days. It will only consider this lead time of two days and whether a particular item is in stock or whether it's not in stock, it doesn't care. It just simply follows the lead time and provides you with the delivery date two days ahead of today. Okay, as simple as that. So uh, since it is very simple, let's introduce one more concept which is called as a transportation days. In all of this scenario, transportation days are also applicable for ATP and also applicable for the sales lead time. In all the scenarios that we have followed, uh, for example, in this particular scenario also, um, we did mention that the shipment date and the received date, you see, it both are 22nd, 22nd. Because the transportation day is zero. Which means that we are assuming that the customer and the warehouse are next to each other. So as soon as I ship from my warehouse on 22nd, it is received on the same day on 22nd. That's why my shipment date and my receipt date is same so far. And even there is no transportation days, which is zero because there's no transportation lead time that is configured in the system. But in order for me to explain the sales or a lead time, I'm also going to introduce the transportation days, meaning the transportation lead time into the picture. So let's try to put a transportation lead time. In, in this case, I'm assuming that my customer is slightly far away and I'm going to ship my product today, but it is going to go on a flight through air as a delivery mode and it is going to reach my customer the very next day. Okay, so it needs one day of lead time. In order to do that, you need to go to the inventory module and go to the setup section distribution and transportation days okay this is the area path and uh, in the transportation days i will be giving a, a transportation day for from my warehouse to my customers uh, pin code okay so i'm going to just say new my transportation day is going to be one day and it is going to be shipped to the country India because my warehouse is in India and to a specific province in India and uh, uh, it is going to go uh, to a specific city in India and to a specific zip code in that city which is that and I'm going to also uh, mention and for, for rail you may have a different transportation days for uh, rail or for uh, air you will have a different transportation days right so all that mode of deliveries can be specified here so in for my mode of delivery is going to be air so i'm going to say that it's going to be one day and i'm going to de default it as a default mode so once i do that and uh, this is my zip code so i also need to make sure that my uh, customer is also in the same zip code so that's my customer and my customer address is also following the same zip code so this customer is good to go now let's uh, create a sales order and uh, in this case the default delivery date control is sales lead time not the ATP so let's try to do that so in this previous sales order it's ATP it was ATP but now if you see it will be sales lead time so let's pick a customer let me put that one and as soon as I put the site you see that instead of 22 it's changed to 23 and even right away you will see that 
there is a transportation day right even before i even choose any item so let me um, go there and put a item which is not in the inventory it's not in the inventory the interesting factor now would be your shipment date is still two days because your lead time is two day for preparing the item to be shipped from your warehouse so for two day you will be preparing the package and you will be shipping it and it will be shipped on 22nd as expected but the transport will take one more day to reach so 23rd will be the day when the customer would be receiving the product right so this is how we generate the transportation day using this particular setup so here i have one day transportation day so it's taking one day to ship okay so this is how it works you can even apply this and you will see the 22 23 okay so the item is not in stock so it will consider this lead time right so even if the item is in stock it will, unlike the AT, um, atp method it won't consider inventory okay it will just apply the same date for all the item irrespective of whether they are in stock whether they are not in stock whether there is a demand whether there is a supply it won't consider any of those factors so it's a very fixed and straightforward way which just follows the sales lead time from here okay so of course the transportation day is not only uh, applicable for the sales lead time but also atp time fence plus there will be an additional transportation time because of the new transportation day setup that we have just done okay so that is about the transportation day one more scenario um, i want to cover uh, today's session is um, let's say that you know i'm adding a item in a uh, item which is uh, let's say not in stock that one so uh, you see that when i'm doing the simulation this is an atp uh, delivery date control sales order so if you see that the system considers even the sunday into account for my lead time calculation right so if the lead time is 11 days then it also keeps into account of sunday and provides me with the delivery lead time right but it is often that we all know that the warehouse doesn't work on saturday and sunday so in such cases the lead time should exclude sunday from its calculation right so in order for us to keep an account of these working days you might need to create a calendar and associate the calendar to the warehouse so the sales order understands the warehouse working days okay so um in order to do that you will be um, so this will be affecting your lead time calculation as well for both atp and sales lead time so you need to be mindful of this okay transportation days will be affecting your lead time at the same time even this working times uh, calendar could affect your lead time or make changes to your lead time for both the um, atp method and the sales order lead time method so how do we uh, map a calendar right so this is very easy we will cover all those uh, more detailed uh, calendar related stuff later but um, on this topic um, if you get into the organization administration and um, uh, there is a calendar here set up so firstly you need to set up a working time template so you need to define your template on what time and what date you will, your warehouse will be working so 8 to 5 8 to 5 8 to 5 on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and i i used to close for pickup close for pickup on saturday and sunday so i have created this template already so now i need to um, um, create a calendar uh, let me create one more calendar. I think we used this calendar during our purchase order discussion. Let's be a standard calendar. Okay, and uh, uh, save it at the working times and um, compose working times. And you will be using the calendar and you will be using your work template that we have just created. So this work template will automatically populate the the times okay so if i say okay then the system will automatically populate all those monday to friday eight to five working 
working times and working days and it will close the the uh, saturday and sunday okay so let's wait for the calendar to compose so we have it uh, it is uh, starting from 15 yeah and uh, it is closed on this two days which is also today which is sunday closed today and the, the standard time is from um, 8 to 5 and on the sunday you don't have any standard time on saturday you don't have any standard time on friday of course you have a standard time so this is the calendar setup that you need to do and then copy the calendar and uh, go to the inventory module uh, go to your warehouse that's my warehouse and map the calendar here oops um Let me check if I mapped it. Yeah, map the calendar here. And even in the site, you will have a time zone which is referring to the uh, current uh, uh, time zone of where I'm located. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the, the setup that you need to do. So once you uh, map the calendar in the warehouse, then let's go and um, to be the safer side, let me remove this, delete this sales order, and create a new sales order. ATP. Uh, so that's one. So if you see now, uh, the system is, isn't considering the, the Sunday, which is 20th. Previously, it used to show a Sunday, right? So it is excluding the Sunday and it is uh, using from the Monday and it is calculating accordingly. Okay. So uh, that is how it works, guys, when you are having a working days set up in your calendar. Okay. So uh, this is uh, another thing that you need to keep in your mind, meaning the transportation days affects the lead time for both the sales lead time and for the ATP method. The, uh, the working calendar, which is in the warehouse, will also affect the lead time calculation. Okay. So uh, let me go to my warehouse again. And remove the calendar because I wanted to do another scenario uh, just remove the calendar and just keep it like how it was earlier so apart from transportation time working calendar there is one more area which could also affect the the lead time which is called as a order entry deadline okay so in the inventory management module there is a area under the distribution which is called as an order entry deadline firstly you need to have an order entry deadline group once you have it then you can create an order entry deadline for a specific group and tag the group for the customer so inside the customer there is a sales tab where you can tag the order entry deadline group okay so if you want to have different sla based cutoff time for your customers Every customer will have a different uh, cutoff time where they will be receiving the order. Maybe certain um, uh, customer will only receive the order from 2 a.m. to 5 p.m. Certain customer will only receive it from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Right. So based on your SLA, you can create multiple order entry deadline groups and map the groups, different groups to different customer based on the customer's SLA. Right. So to avoid um, uh, too long session i'm going to just keep it short and easy i'm going to make changes to all the customers i'm not going to like you can even make it uh, make the changes at the group level and tag the order entry redline group here for a specific site and um, likewise you can create multiple groups and multiple lines here but in in to save some time i'm going to uh, change the order entry deadline for all the groups and all the customer here 
directly okay so i'm going to assume that all my customers will only receive the order until 11 a.m because my time right now is beyond 11 a.m so in order for me to demonstrate this scenario i want something early so i'm going to assume it as 11 a.m as a cutoff time for all my customers okay I could have just changed for Sunday anyway so 11 a.m. is the change which is the order entry deadline for my customer okay so of course my warehouse doesn't work on Saturday and Sunday I changed that setup now so for now my warehouse works all seven days okay assuming that I am working on all seven days but my customer will only be receiving the order up to 11 a.m. beyond that it will not receive the order order needs to go on the next day okay considering this story in the mind uh, let's create a sales order now and um, it's ATP and since it's ATP I'm going to add an item which is in stock so which will be delivered today itself in the normal cases uh, so in the in general it should supposed to be delivered on 20 itself because it is in inventory we've already seen this multiple times but since uh, the cutoff time of my shipping location which is in india of this time zone because my customer address is an indian address so system knows the time zone of my customer so based on this time zone since the shipping location will only accept the orders up to 11 a.m this particular order cannot be delivered on 20th so the order needs to be going on 21st okay so there's no no transportation days set up for for this uh, customer so there's no lead time it's just going on the same day so this also influence your uh, lead time calculation guys so be mindful of your working calendar your transportation days your order entry deadline and all of that into consideration before you go ahead and do your setup so um, in all our discussions right we did only uh, considered the accounts receivable parameter setup right so this is the last area from where all of this values gets default to okay but we can also do the changes to the lead time sales lead time everything at the item level okay so if i actually get into my item itself so a lot of items that i have used uh, okay let me take this item so default order setting right in here edit and this is for transfer order this is for the sales order so i can override the lead time of two day here to three day likewise i can override the uh, atp time fence here to a different way so this is the first parameter that the system will check okay if there is no override here then only then the system will consider the accounts receivable parameter so if you want to make any item specific lead time for example you are using um, the sales lead time as your method so system will always follow two but if you want to vary it specific to different items you can always use this and within an item you can keep changing your sales lead time that way the sales lead time changes for each item likewise if you also would like to change the lead time specific to an item and to a customer then you also have this um, trade agreement we've already seen this lead time before so in the trade agreement you have a lead time here so you can mention a lead time in the trade agreement itself for a specific customer so even that way you will be able to uh, change the lead time so there are multiple ways that you can play around with this lead time guys so this is a default area 
inside the customer sorry inside the item itself or in the trade agreement also you can play around with the sales data so these are all on a high level the topics related with the delivery date control guys do a lot of practical um, hands-on exercises and try to do uh, change values and try to see the impact of uh, various things that way you will uh, understand this better and uh, thank you for um, following uh, this episode and see you again in the next episode with a different topic